When a user comes to our web application and they make a request, we need to show them the correct page. So if they're going to the contact page, we need to send them to the contact handler. If they're going to the home page, we send them to the home handler. In this video, what I want to do is look at the HTTP.request to sort of show you how if you wanted to build some sort of routing on your own, so let me take a step back. Routing is what happens when you are determining what page to show the user. Um, and this usually depends on a couple different things such as the path of the request they're making, maybe the domain that they're using. Um, you could also look at things like the HTTP method and all of that put together, you decide what page am I gonna show this user or how am I gonna to respond to them? So in this case, our routing is pretty simple. We have, if the path is slash contact, we send them to the contact handler. If it's just any other path, we send them to the home handler. So we're gonna look at the HTTP.request type that we have, and we're gonna see if we wanted to build our own router, what would that look like? How would we go about doing that? And the goal of that is just so you understand at a high level how you might go about building a router, because I think that'll make it a little bit easier to understand what routers are doing behind the scenes. We're not gonna replicate what they do perfectly, because there are some algorithms and things out there that are a little bit beyond the scope of this course that you might use for parsing paths and sending people to the right um, route as efficiently as possible. But in our case, we're gonna see how we can just use a switch statement or an if statement to um, actually send the user to the correct page. So in the future, we are going to use a routing library. Um, all of this is, is mostly just to help you understand the code a little bit better. So if this isn't something that interests you, you could technically skip this, but I would definitely suggest you stick around and check this out. So we're gonna start by going to the HTTP.request, and that's gonna be HTTP Golang, and we're gonna look for the HTTP package. Then we're gonna to go to the index, and we're gonna to go to the request type. And then from here, we're really just looking at anything that might help us build a router of our own. So here we have the method, which is the HTTP method. So this one definitely looks like something that could be useful in the future. We don't use it just yet, but since it allows us to tell if it's an HTTP get, a post, a put, or any of those, and if we ever get to the point where we have a page where one path can be used for both a post and a get, for instance, if you have um, a page that a get means you're requesting the form and a post means you're submitting the data from the form, then it makes sense for that path to be the same, but you need some way to differentiate which handler you're gonna use based on that HTTP method. We also have the URL here, and this is the other big one we're gonna be looking at. Um, the method is just a string, so it's pretty straightforward. The URL, on the other hand, is actually a URL.URL .URL type. So if we dig into this, we'll see that a URL is composed of quite a few things, but at the end of the day, the only thing we're gonna need for this course is the path. And the path is basically just this field here. It's going to show us the path that the user was using when they made the web request. So in this case, the path is slash contact, um, but the path could be all sorts of things. So we wanna see what that looks like and just sort of get a feel, make sure it's the right thing that we're looking for. So what I'm gonna do in our code is actually just add something to one of these handlers that would print it out. So we'll do something like format.println um, and we'll do, actually let's do fprint. Uh, fprint, actually I'm gonna do a new handler just to make this simpler. Let's do func uh, path handler and I'm just gonna put w and r here. And then in here what we're gonna do is uh, func.fprint and we'll do w and we'll do the request.url.path. It is worth noting that url and path here are both fields on the actual request type. So first URL is a field on the request, and then path is a field on the URL. So I'm not using these parentheses. I know for anybody who's coded a good bit, a good bit this might seem like common sense, but um, this happens to be a method, whereas this is a field. So that's why you're not seeing parentheses here. So with this, we can print this out, and I'm just gonna take this path handler, I'm gonna paste it in here, and I'm gonna comment this out this other line. So what I'm doing with these changes is I'm basically saying only use the path handler and all it's ever gonna do is just print out the current path. So with that, we can stop the server, go run the server, and let's go ahead and just load it up here with the slash contact. And you'll see it prints out slash contact. If I put no path in whatsoever, you'll see it defaults to a slash. So that's something to take note of is that even if we don't provide a path, it sets the default path to be a slash. 
and we can have like slash dog slash cat, and we can see that that also loads that path there correctly. So this looks to be like we're looking or what we're looking for. So in a future video, we'll probably talk a little bit about things like the raw path, which was another thing here that we didn't use um, and why that doesn't fit, because I think it's worth understanding um, URL encoding just a hair, but we're not gonna do that in this video. I just wanted you to sort of see how this path was. So what we're gonna do in the next lesson is we're actually gonna look at how we could use this path to then start writing our own router of some sort. It's not gonna be a fully featured router, but we're gonna try to send the user to the correct page based on the information that we have inside of something like the path.